What up, Fish Tank people? FishTankTV.com. Dustin's Fish Tanks bringing it to you right after Christmas. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I hope you had a fabulous holiday season. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever the heck you're celebrating. Chilling with your family. I'm bringing this video to you from the floor of the greenhouse on an unseasonably hot day. But uh, today I want to show you some heating tips, heating your aquarium. Because I'm actually heating this greenhouse. People always ask me, how do you heat the greenhouse? I don't heat the greenhouse. I heat the water inside the greenhouse. But I'm going to take you from uh, head to toe of how this greenhouse stays warm. So check it out. Uh, first things first, concrete floor all the way around. There's my temperature right there. Look, at this is at like, I don't know, late in the day. It was as hot as 80 in here, but I've got the door all the way open over there. So it's cooled off. I've also got kids screaming. So we'll start at the floor. Concrete floor. Concrete floor is our friend. Uh, keep some heat in. It's not like a dirt floor, so that works well as a heat sink. Then I've got these barrels. The more water, I learned about this from a Missouri state, I believe. They had a big experiment with the greenhouse. Uh, I've got the barrels in there. Those sweat because it's hot in here right now, and um, they exude heat. They let heat off, okay? So they heat up during the day, and then at night they let heat out. So they're part of my heat sink. Guess what else heats everything? The fish tanks all over the freaking place. So let's talk about the fish tanks in a second. One other thing. I do heat the, I do, I didn't heat the ceiling. I have the ceiling covered with uh, two pool cover liners and they're like ribbed or whatever. And they have to put them on like, I don't know, uh, midway through October I put them on. But they keep this thing sealed up pretty good. Good little echo. There's actually two of them. There's a split right in the middle and they're overlapped there. So that's what I do. And then they overlap all the way on the edge there. You can see that keeps it tight wrap it up b that's it's tight it's warm it's the, it's the winter condom if you will but it makes it hot in here uh with these on here but it also makes it super super humid okay it keeps the humidity in let's talk about the humidity coming in here i heat the water not the actual uh greenhouse itself i do have a kerosene heater i haven't busted out we've had some cold things but look i run in here i run heaters now the like average temperature in here at night it drops down to like 40 degrees or something like that so that's a hard load on heaters now most aquarium heaters are made to i don't know heat up around 20 degrees or so so if it's 40 in here heat up 20 gets you to 60 that's working the heater pretty hard so one of these tips i recommend for you all and this is a safety thing too is use more than one heater in your tank because if you have more than one heater they're both working together not as hard if one goes out look here's the here, i mean this is the worst case scenario right if filter goes out you can replace the filter the fish will be all right without thing if a heater sticks and stays on and heats up and cooks your tank you sol if a heater uh, kicks off and freezes your tank you're sol as well so you want to use two heaters in case something happens at least you can check that out like i was saying if you've got a big tank or you just want to be safe rock more than one heater use two i've got uh one of them over here it's the e300 from our friends at fluval look i wouldn't uh put it on camera if i hadn't been using it for a while and tried this sucker out these suckers work and i've been critical of fluval's old uh little silver bullet style i like the e300 just like the mercedes check this sucker out fully submersible got a little toggle switch here you can go into like half temperature increments there uh just you know slick submersible pretty easy to roll here half half temperature swings it's hard to do it and talk at the same time take it underwater the only critique that i have of this heater is that it's got i like this like surround on it because i'm beating the heck out of these things the problem that i have with it is that you need to get a little bit more water flow around it and that's just by the nature of the build of it because it's got this build around it so the water can't flow as easily through it but whatever i mean that's a uh, you know, digital display, underwater, and if it's not getting enough water flow, it flashes. So that's pretty slick. So love the digital display. It's also got a corner mount, which I've never used, but uh, I mount them sideways, and that's a tip with any heater. You want to mount it sideways so that the heat comes up like this. You won't, wouldn't, wouldn't want to have it uh, vertical like that because the heat would just go up in a column like that. And then you want to get some water flow on it. Uh, over here, I'm running one of these little power heads on this one. It blows on that one. And then here's the other variety one, but this one's not fully submersible. And I was critical of these in the past, but these ones are pretty slick too. I think they've improved them. Got the little blue light, let you know it's on. Get that sucker back down in there. Again, not submersible, submersible. But I got to show you guys what I got going on over here. Got another one running here, another one running there. Getting ready for a big Africa import. And speaking of Africa, I want to see your African cichlids. I've debated about putting like a giant mascot, Frontosa, Brichardi, 
Lupe, whatever. I want to see your African cichlids. Our friend Rod over Rod's food. Look, the dude's the man. Been doing saltwater food for a long time. Having a 75 gallon to 100 gallon African cichlid tank contest. Look, if you've got a sick tank and it's like under 75, submit it anyway. We're going to be spilling those out all over Bray. You're going to have a nice time with it. So Rod's Foods, there's three winners. Winner can win like $300 of the stuff. You can mix and match the fish food and all that. So shout out to Rod's Food. Putting together an African cichlid contest. I've got an African import coming. Uh, African cichlids have nothing to do with these, but I just think this is a fat tank and I've been doing the work on it. Uh, this is where I keep the fire cherries. Fires and the cherries. Fire shrimp, I've got absolutely loving them. Keeping them in full moss, ain't scared, running the light a lot, get a lot of algae, don't care, they're obviously happy. Check that sucker out. So if you've got a fat African cichlid tank, obviously we're not mixing cichlids with any of these uh, shrimp here, but uh, email it to dftcontest at dustinsfishtanks.com and uh we'll get it up it's on uh, it's all on facebook if i can do it on youtube i totally freaking would but you just can't uh load up people's stuff so i'm i'll edit a video at the end get them in the uh winners are gonna be we're gonna look through them all and then we're gonna weed out uh all but like 10 and then we're gonna have you guys vote on facebook on those sorry again i can't do it on youtube just easier for it how about that uh liberia red tiger lotus too yeah i'm having fun so that's what i'm up to Email DFT contest at DustinsFishTanks.com, the African cichlid tanks. And uh, yeah, double down on your heaters. Your heater breaks, that sucks. The tank either gets cooked or gets frozen. Tank on, everybody. Later. See how I just sit here and stare at this? Crap loaded. Shrimp up in there.